Okay, so I'm going to make sure I've got things going because I always do that. I actually watch the video over here as well as talking to you guys through here because I want to make sure everything is working properly. <clears throat> there we go. Better have got things going. And the sound works. <laughs> All right. So um, today, uh, just basically uh, more of the same. I'm going to work on uh, the armor, probably working on the lower half of the upper arms, and continuing on with the, um, the, the skirt armor. Now, one thing you might notice, let me adjust this a little bit here. One thing you might notice is that I tape the pieces where they should go, and I kind of call this uh, pre-visualizing. Um, I do this... Hey Spartan, what's up bud? Um, I do this to basically get a feel for how everything is going together. Um, obviously with all the tape it looks like shit, but um, it gives me more of a visual reference to see if I need to adjust anything. Hey Mark! Mwah. Um, yeah, so that way I know what needs to be changed, what doesn't need to be changed, um, you know, tweak here, tweak there, that sort of thing. Uh, so finally, finally, I'm going to shape this sucker and stick it in there. Uh, let's do that right now. Get out my handy dandy heat gun. Now, this has already been heat sealed, so it's not a big deal. I'm just softening it up so that I can force it into shape. I was going to think, I was trying to think of something uh, witty to say, but nothing came to mind. I guess I haven't had enough coffee yet. Oh no! Hope your dog's okay. You know, honestly, I think that, um, I think that, uh, pets should be covered under, uh, medical insurance. Hmm, thanks, Mark. What do you guys think? You think, uh, pets should be covered under your medical insurance, or... Fuck them. <laughs> Because at least for me, I think my cats are part of my family. So, why wouldn't they be covered under my medical insurance, if I had any? To me, that just makes perfect sense. But I can't think of anywhere that regular, you know, medical insurance covers um, pets. Which I think sucks. Oh no! Well, that really sucks then, if it's not even your dog. But at least you're a good, um, what's that? Separate. Oh, really? So you can get medical insurance for your pets. That's actually pretty cool. All right. So I've got this. I mean, it's relatively flat to begin with, but it uh, gives it a little bit more of a belt sort of feel. Get that down there. What do you think? Good? Yeah? Oh, don't everybody speak at once. Alright, so I'm going to put it in where it needs to go. Like that. It's probably not going to stay. But, like I said, it gives me a pre-representation. Now, the, the wings of the hip are going to come in more and bracket that uh, belt buckle part. 
Um, so, not to worry. But uh, that's all going to happen when I've actually got them um, more... I can't even see my face. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's why I've got them actually more solid and, and uh, finished. Finished? Mounted? I don't know. Whatever. Um, the plan is I'm actually going to have a, uh, a spandex bodysuit. I'd say pets don't usually last long enough to make joint insurance worthwhile. But the UK, we don't really have insurance, so it wouldn't apply here anyway. Yeah, Hong Kong is kind of the same, um, you know, being a British colony and all, uh, originally. But, uh, yeah, it's, medical insurance is pretty much um, just something you do. But, I mean, places like Canada, where they've got uh, universal health care, I don't see why they couldn't add the pets on, you know. And if the States has Medicare or... Obamacare or whatever the hell it is now um, that, you know, is ongoing, I, I just don't see why it wouldn't be a problem. But that's me. Uh, hang on, I've got other messages pulling in here. Oops. There we go. Okay, so, anyways, moving on, let me put that away, um, so, haven't finished the other arm, uh, I did cut the pieces out, but I haven't, uh, formed them, uh, you'll notice I do have the one, um, upper sleeve on the mannequin already, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you guys how I do my um, my, my, my patterns, my templates. Um, a lot of it has to do with, you know, just testing and fitting and eyeballing. I think I did it a couple of times, uh, before, but I mean, that's why I end up with all this wonky paper stuff around. And I keep it until I know the part that I'm, I made from it is done and dusted that way. If I have to go back and redo anything or adjust anything, I've still got the patterns. Even if, um, you know, for example, this, which is part of the, uh, the flare or the under piece of the, the skirt, I still actually have to draw in a, um, a pattern that's going to get uh, etched into the, the foam. And so I'm going to do that on here. When I'm happy with it, I'll put it on, or I'll cut that pattern, put it on so I know that the outside edge fits perfectly, trace my lines, and then score the uh, the foam, and then uh, heat it up and get that nice um, uh, groove. Uh, sometimes, like the Spartan armor, for example, um, I don't really go to town with it um, as far as the patterns go um, but that's basically what I've done in here and like all these little details on the back and the sides that's just scoring it um, and I think a lot of them I just eyeballed or these ones here I actually made little um, hexagon Hexagon? Yeah, hexagon-shaped pieces and stuck them on so that all the pieces are the same. Now, actually, I just noticed this. I've had this thing for like three years. Um, when you're doing the scoring, you can see right here, I didn't connect the cut lines. So when you heat it up, you get a little bump. If that happens, you can just go in with your knife again connect those lines, shoot it with the heat gun, and you're good to go. Um, yeah. All right, so let me put this thing away and get out some 
paper. I've lost my sketching pencil. I have no clue where it is. All right, so what I'm going to do is try to bring this thing over closer. All right, can we see that all right? Yeah, I think so. Put this way. So what... Uh, there we go. So what I'm going to do is, working off of this piece, uh, because I made that piece specifically first, because it goes underneath the piece that I'm going to be making. Now this one is... Do I have a picture of it loose? Probably not. All right, let's just... Let's just pull this off the wall. Alright, so, as you can see here, this is the part that we're going to be making today. And right up in here is the part that's already there. Alright, cool. Um, this one is actually going to be kind of tricky simply because the way that this fantasy armor goes does not really lend itself well to actual human movement. Um, there's the main point here. Well, can you see that? The main point here, which is fine because it can come out to the outside of the elbow, but then here and here it actually looks like it comes into the cut of the elbow, so I'm probably going to have to fiddle with that so that I can actually, you know, move my arms. That would make things a little bit easier. Um, all right, so... Now, the other thing, too, is this has got a lot of uh, detailing on the upper part. It actually looks like it's a dragon head sort of thing. Um, it's kind of a motif that goes on over this thing. Uh, and it's got these two big-ass horns that are going to stick right, right about here and here somewhere. Um, I'll probably just do those with foam, uh, like I did before, either sandwiching them together and then shaping the whole part, or, um, like I did with the booby blades here, um, shaping them, clipping. What do you mean clipping? Is my stream not doing okay? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I didn't read the first part. Yeah. I mean, I've got a, um, a screenshot of my character with her arms up like this. And you can clearly see, you know, some of the blades sticking through her head. Um, and some of them, like here, for example, the, uh, the, the lance fits on her back. But with those blades on her back, the angle just simply will not work. It just won't. Um, it's, it's, uh, but it's a video game, right? So, all right. So let's get this show on the road, boys and girls. Oh, are there any girls here? Oh, we only got three people today. Oh. Um, all right. So I'm going to fit this kind of loosely. Oh, that's big. We are going to... I think what I'm going to do here, first of all, I'm going to take this off and put it on myself. You know, see, it's pretty loose on me. Uh, maybe I lost some weight since I made the dummy. I don't know. That'd be cool. Get this up there. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and I'm going to get an idea of where I want it. That way... Actually, that's going to be pretty, pretty close, I think. 
I think that's the elbow right there. I do not know what's going on here. Oh, I guess I do. Because I have... What I've done here, actually, um, the tape on the dummy underneath the arms is actually bridged a little bit, so that's causing some issues. I will put it on here, eyeball it, and then test fit it on myself. That's what I'll do. Alright, so it's a little bit loose, not too much because of the thickness of the... Uh, yeah, I, I got what you meant after I read the previous line about clipping. Um, what was I saying? I don't even remember. Um, yeah, I've got it a little bit looser, so you see I can actually fit my nail in there. Uh, when I put the EVA foam on top, it will actually make it bigger, so I have to remember to um, add a little bit extra underneath. All right, so taking my reference photos or screenshots, I'm going to start to doodle what I think the shape is. Now, actually, I'm just noticing this now. The dragon head stands out a little bit from the arm, um, so I can do that afterwards with when I'm doing the actual dragon head, because that's going to be a separate piece. Um, I don't want to have that as part of the um, uh, the base, the under under base. Ugh, I can't speak today. Um, let's see. But this nose piece that comes down, I definitely will do. So what I'm going to do, just so that I know where everything is going to fit, if I can get this off. So yeah, there's a big gap there that I'll have to fix in a moment. So that's going to sit right about there. And where's my elbow? Okay. So everything's taped together. Well, you know, it, it's it's fantasy armor, so of course it's magical. Um, but yeah, I, I would imagine with all those big blades and spikes and doodads and sculpting, this thing, a little girl like like my character here, would never be able to even stand up in this stuff if it were just plain steel. Not a chance. Uh... Yeah, I think I'm just going to freehand it here. Okay. Actually, I'm going to go over here and bring it down a little bit. Yeah, actually, let me see if I can readjust this so you guys can actually see what the hell I'm doing. So I'm just sort of freehanding the design. I know it's not going to be exact, but um, as long as I get it reasonably close, the weebs at the convention will not lynch me. And I'm allowed to call them weebs because I am one too. Hey, Mongo! Frithy! Thanks! <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
I would have to say that comes up roughly about there. And then it's going to cut back down. Like this. And that's where my elbow bends. So I think I'm going to just leave the point there. Maybe bring it over like that. It's falling out of my top here. I am making my Final Fantasy XIV character's armor. I actually got a full body shot here somewhere in my giant mess. There it is. So I'm making that. Can you see it? Okay. Do, 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 do. So this is my namesake, Kiri Morning. And that's where the name came from. Um, along with other things, but that's the, the, the basic gist of it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> okay. Oh, just give me one second. So right now I'm just freehand sketching the upper armor design to get a sort of baseline, I guess. Now the back I can actually it kind of looks like I can actually have it curve over, bend in my elbow, and then longer at the bottom. What do we got here? Yeah, actually, it's funny. The, um, the background story to that, uh, it's pretty long, and eventually I will make a video um, how I got my name, uh, Kiri, and my handle, Kiri Morning. But uh, the, the game, when I created the character... Um, I couldn't think of what to call her, uh, so I used the random name generator that the game has, and it popped up with Kiri Morning, and I thought, oh, that sounds pretty cool, I like that. Um, so I locked it in. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I'm just using my phone. Uh, Galaxy S10 Plus. Um, the, the, uh, the selfie camera, actually. So, cool. Uh, instead of going and spending a bunch of money on a webcam or whatever, it's, this is what I use. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. I didn't realize it was that good. Um, all right, so let's get back to work. So, yeah, I think what I can do here is actually this point looks like it's behind the elbow so i can bring that curve around and you can't even see i can bring that that point down lower and bring it up and around the upper elbow that way i'll be able to bend so let's see where did i put my phone that's the front. Yeah. Uh, 
I really should move my camera back further so I'm not always cutting my head off. I'm go I'm going to do something about this. <laughs> It's driving me nuts every time I look in the camera. I see that stupid thing. All right. Um, hmm. <laughs> Bring that up. Okay. Sorry, noisy people with their metal carts. And I'm just going to cut off a bunch of this excess that I'm not using at the moment. So I can just bridge that gap and make it a little bit easier to work with. Like I said, I like to pre-visualize it all uh, as I go along. So I'll tape it and stick it and um, do whatever to get the image in my mind how I want the uh, part to be. I think this has a lot to do with a good imagination. If uh, you don't have that, well, you shouldn't even be doing this sort of stuff anyway, then. Right? Uh, this way. Do, do, do. And the line is there. So all I'm doing is just making like a band aid to. Uh, fill in the space that I didn't have in paper so I can make one continuous line. There we go. So, Band-Aid achieved. I don't really like that point. It's kind of too fat. So I'm going to make that a little bit thinner. Bring it up. And curve it around. And give it a little bit of a point on the front because it does have a point most definitely right in the center of the elbow so I don't know we'll figure it out so I've got my basic shape at the bottom here kind of sort of sorted out and there's some more details in there that I'm going to add in uh, namely continuing this crease along so I'm going to sketch that in to the part and then I'm going to draw in some of the details so that when it's in this three-dimensional form I can kind of match it up and then when I put it up flat it'll be a lot easier to um, to transfer over so there's a line just above the edge here. So I'm going to just sketch that in. And it looks like it actually comes... No, that's the front. It doesn't go there. And now this one in the back And there's actually a bit of a detailing at the top as well, so we're going to add that. 
And then this comes up and around. And where does that? Oh, it goes right into the dragon face. So I can just put that in there somewhere. And then take this one and do the same thing. Do, do, do. Something like that. All right, now for the detailing. So this part actually kicks down on, from behind the, the, the dragon horns. So here are the horns up here. I'm not sure if you can see it very well with this printout. But here's the back side, and it actually kicks down and goes around. So I would assume it kicks back up on the other side. Okay, make sure I got my bearings here. There's the front. Here's the dragon. I'm just going to kind of sketch him in there slightly. Or where it's going to go, at least. Something like that. And then the horns. I gotta be somewhere along here, like that. Alrighty. Yeah, they do kick down. So, from here, we're going to bring that down to the point. And then, I don't like how, there we go. <laughs> and I promise this will look a lot better once it's made. And that goes to here. And then it kicks up in the back like something like that. Make sure it's not past anywhere. Okay, good. So, got this mess of lines that only I know what they mean. And now we're going to take this off. Now I think I'm going to... What am I going to do? <clears throat> I think I'm going to just trim it first and see how it fits on my body. I'm surprised the neighbor's dogs are being quiet. Normally they're barking like crazy. I guess they know that I'm, I'm filming, so they, they keep their mouths shut. <laughs> and this one comes up like that. Alright, so, here we go. That's the basic shape of the upper arm on Now, let's see how it fits. Ooh. All right. Cool beans. I can actually bend my arm. Now, obviously, once I have the uh, the bracers, which are really big, um, that's going to restrict my mobility a little bit. But all in all, it looks pretty close to the reference pictures, and I can actually move. 
Awesome socks. All right, now I can take the paper off and start working. Thanks. Now I can take the paper off. Bleh. Paper? Paper. I can take the paper off, trim the top piece, and start tracing it onto my foam. Let's get rid of some of this. I'm trying to figure out where the hell I am going to split this sucker. I guess I can just do it anywhere. I'm going to do it right where the other piece is, too. Come on. Dude. Come on. There we go. Now... Because that's a piece of tape, I'm actually going to seal it down like that with another piece of tape. Um, cool. All right, let's get this shape on the road. Now, this is going to be out from the warbler piece, obviously, because of the thickness of the foam. I'll probably have to sand the foam really thin, or maybe even slice it a little bit to so it's not too thick. Um, we don't want this cute little cat girl being all bulky and manly, right? Yeah, I like that. It works nicely. Oh, something fell. Oh no! Oh yeah. Alright. Do 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 do. Let's throw some of this stuff away. And I need to... I'll be right back. i got to find my foam. Hmm. I thought I had a piece that was already cut. Somewhere. And I'm not showing you my workshop other than what you see out here, because it is a disaster. I will scare everybody with my horribly messy ways. Hmm. Okay, I guess I don't have any larger pieces. I'm going to have to pull out a new one. So, while... Oh, come on. Well, I'm taking this out carefully because the packaging is this weird, freaky woven stuff. And the edges of the uh, foam are the puzzle pieces. Um, don't forget, on the in the description below is my uh, social media links. If you want to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, um, I do cover all this stuff as well as other things. And um, my Patreon. Come and donate to me on Patreon and help me out with this build. It will be greatly appreciated. Alright, we're back. And we have the phone. Where can I put this? Right there. Alrighty, so got my foam. And I will let you see this again. And my pattern. 
So like I said, I'm going to add a little bit extra on the uh, ends here, just so that uh, it gives me a buffer. I think what I will do is just take a piece of scrap paper from somewhere. Uh, this will do. And I'm just going to tape that on so that my buffer piece is even. Uh, there's the dogs. Wolf, wolf, wolf. Oh, guys, shut up. Nobody's afraid of you. Shut up. Mm -hmm. I really hate those dogs. They bark all the time, every day, all freaking day and night. They got really bad owners. So that's like that. I am going to just continue this on like so. Boing. Get out of there. All right. Now, even though these are not expensive, these mats, um, you want to try and maximize uh, their usefulness because small pieces, like these things, for example, are sometimes useful. Actually, I'll show you what I've done uh, with... I think there's a cosplay for my son uh, for Halloween. But you can take, like... I usually just slice these off and use them as... Um, uh, spreaders for my glue, but if you flip them, you can make neat sci-fi designs with them, like so. I don't know if you can see that. You know, and then you can glue those together and stick them along the, the spine or something. Um, hey, Alphamar! Uh, so you can stick them along the spine or something like that, just to add fun, interesting details. Um, if you're not doing a uh, uh, a replica, so today, Alfmar, we are making the lower part of the upper arm armor. So the first part was the um, the upper cuff made out of warbler. And now we're going to do the lower part with EVA foam. So I'm just positioning it so that I'm not wasting too much of this. Because like I said, it's cheap, but you end up with a lot of scrap if you're not careful. So, for Monday's episode, this should be finished, so you'll be able to see this upper arm piece in all its glory. I'll probably be moving on to the shoulders. Um, this armor is actually very... Um, it's a bit of a, uh, a paradox because I want it to be, uh, you know, feminine and sexy, but at the same time, it's, you know, armor. So um, I don't want it to look like too weak, like tinfoil or anything, but I want it to be more, um, more delicate but still look like it does the job. Okay, so now I just flip it over, and I think I will... No. I think maybe I can squeeze that in there? Oh, yeah. Just barely. Uh, this way I'm not wasting too much 
of my material. Can I do it that way? That way? No, nope, that doesn't work. Yeah, so I think this is going to be where it's going to go. Like that. Mm. Oop. Because yeah, this will definitely require a lot of cutting and grinding and sanding and smoothing and shaping and all that good stuff. And you guys don't need to be listening to me with my Dremel going for an hour and a half or anything. Like that. Like that. Doop. Almost there. There. There we go. Um, I think I want, oh, yes. So now what I'm going to do is cut this off so that I can trace that line on there as well. So obviously, yes, these uh, patterns are generally a one-time use because, as you see, I'm chopping them up as I go along, but I guess in a pinch you could probably um, tape them together if you really needed to. Um, I would imagine if you had to redo the part for whatever reason, it's because you made a big mistake. And you don't want that particular part anyway. So now I'm just taking the, the larger piece um, with more surface area, putting it back down, and lining it up with the lines that I've already made. Pretty simple and straightforward stuff here. And then I'm just tracing this bottom edge, which will just be a score. It will not be a complete cut through. Because this is just for cosmetic detailing. Oops, move that down a bit. In this way, everything is reasonably identical from one side to the other. There. And like I said, I keep those pieces so I don't have to redo it. Uh, yes, uh, you basically have to do that with all the uh, the foam parts um, use the heat gun like I said don't even bother trying with a uh, with a hair dryer it just won't do anything uh, it'll make it warm but it won't even close the outside foam cells so where's my knife so the first thing I'm gonna do is chop this down a little bit so it's a wee bit easier to handle on my workbench Oh, oops. Alright, we get out of here. Over there. Alright, there's my two arm pieces. Now, I've got these two lines very close together. So I'm going to use that 
to separate the pieces, one cut will be um, a real cut, and the other ones were just getting it um, separated so that I can work with them. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem when you are cutting really thin parts of this foam is the knife tends to like to jump, oops, jump off of, um, off the cut. So, for example, here, with this piece now, right here, it will jump, and I'll get a little bit of a, um, uh, kind of like this little nipple thing, whatever you want to call it, um, that I'll have to obviously go back and sand. So when you're doing your parts, or when you're laying them out on the foam, you want to think about that. If, in this case here, because this this point is going to be shaped out uh, and sanded and everything anyway, uh, it's not going to be a flat surface. It's not really a big deal. Uh, but you can see how these rough cuts here, um, when you're using a, a wide blade like this, uh, you'll tend to get this jagged cut, which obviously is going to have to be sanded smooth anyway. Uh, so let's do that one so that you can see what I was talking about. I'm going to go and sharpen my knife first. And you get out of the way. <laughs> so I just use a, a regular whetstone. You guys can see that. Just a regular whetstone with uh, WD-40 on it to sharpen my X-Acto knife. Uh, that way it lasts a lot longer because foam, believe it or not, foam dulls the blade really fast. I think I mentioned this before. Um, for some reason, the, the, the EVA foam really dulls the ultra-sharp X-Acto blades. And I'm using these, uh, um, these, what is it, JK something, some really good Japanese brand, and the blades are black, and, uh, what is it, two, 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 KDS, um, yeah, uh, I really like these blades, unfortunately I couldn't get the thin ones, I did get another Japanese brand, but I have no idea where that went. And I don't know where my handle is right now, but right now I'm just doing the big bulky stuff anyway. Um, okay, so let's start in. Cut, cut, cut. So you want the blade to be sharp so that it goes through the foam like butter, and you'll start feeling it. Um, snagging when uh, um, when it's getting too dull, so you don't have this nice smooth line. And as it's foam, it does flex, so keep that in mind when you're cutting anywhere that there's a corner. Um, I'll give you an example. So I've got this nice fine point and this bigger point, and I want to cut that. Um, down here. If you're not careful with your cut, and don't cut your fingers off, uh, say I want to split this. If I'm not careful with how I do it, I end up with a really wonky cut. So you want to make sure that when you're doing it, especially this, your blade is really sharp and you want to kind of slice back and forth a little bit to get it going so you can get a nice smooth even cut like that. All right, that's garbage now. Uh, back to this. So like I said, this is all being um, shaped, so I'm not really concerned with how 
perfect my edges are, but when you start with a good edge, you end up having less work to do later on. Now, when I'm doing these corners, I'd like to... Actually, um, one of these days, I would like to get a, uh, a bandsaw. Um, one of the other uh, uh, prop makers and, and cosplay makers, um, Bill Duran at Punish Props, he's actually got a bandsaw with a really fine tooth blade, and it cuts through this stuff so nicely, I want one really bad. Um, I've never thought of uh, using a coping saw, um, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, like I was saying, I like to cut from the point, the inside point, out. That way I don't accidentally overcut on the part. The only problem with that, and I will show you in a moment, is where the two cuts met, the top edge is no problem. But here, some of that foam has uh, buckled underneath the blade and cut on a, a weird angle. So again, something to, to keep in mind. I think I'm getting sick. Now, inside curves like this would be much better with a, a, a coping saw or a uh, fine tooth thin bladed bandsaw. Barring that, if you're really cheap like me, this big blade doesn't do the best. And like I said, I don't know where I put that pack of small blades. Oh, here it is. Do I know where my handle is? Uh, nope, that's a big one. Right in there. Oh, of course. I cannot find my small handle. I really should have done this before I started the stream. But it did not occur to me until just now. And more shit's falling down. Yay! Alright, well, I'll do that for next time. Sand the crap out of what with this? If I use the saw? Well, like I said, um, like if you go on to uh, Punish Props' uh, YouTube channel, uh, he uses his bandsaw a lot when he's doing this stuff. Um, I'm not sure what kind of blade he's got on it, but it cuts through it just as well as one of these knives. Um, and the nice thing is he's got an adjustable bed, so if you wanted to do a 45-degree angle on a curve... You can get a nice 45 degree angle all the way around because you just tilt the bed and cut your shape. Um, really super handy. Okay, so this problem area. There's a little bit excess here and a lot there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in here and bring it out and I'll show you what I was talking about earlier. Cut that excess off. So there is a point because it's from the previous cut and it's joined up. I have to sand that out and uh, shape it. But again, this piece is going to be rounded and uh, beveled and all that stuff anyway. So thinking ahead, 
I knew this was going to be the case, so I could do it that way. But if you had an area that you didn't want to be doing that on, you might want to avoid that. Oh, we gotta sharpen it. Be right back. And you want to make sure you get that WD-40 off the blade because it does nasty things to the foam. But yes, the, the foam does sand, especially if you're using a Dremel, it sands really well. Uh, but you get a lot of dust kicking up all over the place and... You know, um, it's never going to be as nice of a finish as a clean cut edge. So the less you have to sand, the better. I mean, that being said, sometimes you have to shape it and you're going to have to sand it anyway. But um, try, what's the, the old saying, measure twice, cut once? Now in this case here, it's cut once, or cut twice, sand once. Something, I don't know what I'm talking about. I swear you guys are just watching me. Oops. Alright. So... I made a boo-boo. Uh, right here, I actually nicked into the surface. But again, this is getting curved. So in this particular instance, it's not a big, huge issue. Lucky me. Uh, if you end up having it scored, when, even when you heat seal it, um, that scoring is going to show up. Uh, which then has to be filled in somehow, or covered up, or whatever, if it's something you don't want to be there. Do, 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 do. Um, what I'm doing is basically, I've got, in this case here, because I'm copying my uh, Final Fantasy XIV character, I've got a lot of reference pictures of what I want. Um, unfortunately, uh, she's a 3D model in a video game. I'm not. Um, so, the laws of physics don't apply to her, but they do to me, so I have to kind of um, anticipate and adjust for that fact when it comes to this fantasy armor. Um, I mean, granted, if you were doing, um, you know, like my ODST, for example, it's somewhat based on a realistic suit of armor, and like this one here, you know, with all of these blades and spikes and everything it's going to be an interesting uh, thing walking around at a con um, you know turning around or whatever 
these things might whack into people, so you have to be mindful of that as well. Whereas, you know, the character doesn't have to worry about it. Um, things like, you know, these guys here, uh, I'm joking about, you know, this one being the uh, no-kissy blade. Um, you know, you've got to keep in mind, you've got all this armor on here, you've got this armor on here, and if you're going to have lunch or something... You know, you don't want to be whacking everything, increasing it, or breaking something off uh, in the middle of the con. So, um, yeah, it's great for posing, but it's definitely not something that uh, uh, you're not going to be able to get it exactly accurate. So, yeah, there there is a lot of um, what's the word I'm looking for. Not ad lib, but um, you're just kind of, like you said, feeling your way through it rather than um, planning and, and meticulously measuring and all that. Uh, I suppose you could do that if you are that type of person, which I am not. I'm a much more of a, you know, see it, do it, feel it. Um, that's why I said I pre-visualize by taping all the, the, the semi-finished parts onto the mannequin so I can step back and look and see where I need to make any adjustments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Improvising. <laughs> Thanks, Spartan. You ever get that where you, your words just... You know what you want to say, but you have no idea what the word is? And it just... Oh. Um, maybe I should have been a blonde. Alright, so we are... Oh yeah, we're at an hour here, so... It's basically the same thing as all the other stuff. I'm going to reduce the back here so that it's smooth at least um, along the edges to get rid of the, um, the, the edge texture. And I definitely think that's going to be too thick on here. Uh, where is it? This way. This way? No. It's not even the right one. It's this one. Um... Yeah, so I think that's definitely going to be too thick on this part to uh, be the way I want it to be. So I'm definitely going to be uh, taking that down, I'd say about half, roughly. Um, and I have to set my, my sander up, so I won't bother with that right now. Um... Hmm. I don't know what to do now. Um, okay, so... You guys have been watching for a while. Uh, any questions or suggestions you guys have uh, to help me make my stream more interesting, more educational, more fun? Um, whatever. Anything? Nobody? Why do I have the quietest chat in all of YouTube? Come on, guys. Anyways, uh, so I'm not just sitting here staring at the camera. Um, I will probably be doing some... Um, some some kind of contest or giveaway soon. Um, I will be getting. I will be starting to prepare for my surgery. Um, 
Meh. Well, that's kind of what I'm doing here, but... I mean, even though I am a teacher, teaching this sort of thing, it's... Unless you've got the parts on hand, um, and you're following along, it makes it a little bit difficult. I could possibly do that um, with, you know, sample parts or whatever, but for the live stream with this, uh, this particular costume... Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we could figure something out. That's that's not a bad idea, actually. Um, yeah, so uh, come summertime, I will be starting to prepare for my surgery. So I'm going to have to come up with a bunch of money. I'm thinking about doing some, uh, some sort of contests to uh, help me with that, uh, rather than just begging people for money. Um... So what do you guys think of that? I've, like I said before, I've got my Stormtrooper blaster. I've got my Han Solo blaster. Um, they're just sitting there collecting dust. I do these things just because I like doing it. It's fun. It's the making for me. It's not so much the having. Um, so if anybody's interested in some kind of a contest, a raffle, a... a a giveaway, I don't know. Um, and also, I will be selling my Millennium Falcon. Uh, it's nearly finished. Uh, I know it's taken me three years, but uh, it's kind of been off and on, and I haven't touched it in a while. But it's nearly finished. Um, I will be selling that. Uh, it's definitely not cheap. video about crafting. Yeah. I, I will be actually posting up a few uh, standalone videos uh, in the near future. Most of them are on the, uh, the, the trans side because uh, uh, I've got some stuff to say about that. But uh, I could do something along the lines of that for, uh, for the cosplay as well. Um, and it'll definitely be a lot more interesting than watching me cut foam and then talk for half an hour. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think that is going to wrap it up for today, uh, cause I haven't got a lot to say now and I really haven't got a lot to do before my time runs out cause I want to always keep this under an hour and a half. Um, anyways, my, uh, social media links are below. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, if you feel that I'm adding some value to your life and, uh, you feel it's worth it, uh, click on my Patreon link down there and, uh, help me out that way. Uh, it'll definitely keep me going with this stuff. Uh, for longer. And, uh, yeah, I guess I will get these things finished over the weekend. Uh, so you can finally see that. Uh, the belt buckle thing, uh, I will work that on. Steph! Hi! You made it! <laughs> yeah, you, you just came in under the wire, girl. <laughs> I was just about to wrap it up. Because everybody doesn't want to talk except for Alphamar. Uh, anyways, uh, so yeah, I, uh, I'll have all these things done and, uh, maybe get that belt buckle done. So I have some experience. Oh, thank you. Uh, so I have some experience with the foam clay before I actually work on it in front of you guys. And then maybe I can start sculpting the foam clay on the breastplate here eh. on the breastplate up here uh, with all that really intricate dragony design that uh, we got <laughs> uh, so yeah I think that's about it for today um
Yay. <laughs> yeah, these guys here, they are very quiet. I don't know if they're just off doing their thing and they've got my stream running or... Thanks, staff. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if they're they're even watching. They just got it running to to give me the the, the views, which is fine. Yes, um, I will be once it's all sanded and shaped and everything's good. It will be uh, primed with Plasti Dip, which is kind of like a rubberized um, a rubberized coating. Uh, that root sticks really well to the foam, so it gives a nice, a nice finish. Uh, and then painted with various things, possibly acrylic, or I haven't decided exactly what uh, what paint I'm going to be using to achieve this nice metallic purple that she's got. Um, and the undersuit, uh, I'm actually getting a. Um, uh, a, a, a vendor on AliExpress to uh, custom make the, the undersuit. <clears throat> uh, so it'll be similar, you know, low cut like this to show some skin in the... Uh, where's the picture? You know, so it'll be low cut to show the skin up here uh, with a wide shoulder. Uh, short sleeve, big tummy window, and I think I'll probably end up having uh, an underwire bra or something um, stitched into it so that I don't fall out in the middle of a uh, uh, <laughs> in the middle of a convention. That would suck really bad. Um, and then long, uh, long legs. Yeah, actually, it, uh, it's quite possible. Um, once you've got uh, the, the, the Plasti Dip on there, uh, here, I'll give you an example. Um, for example, on this, this has been had the crap beat out of it uh, for a while. This has got uh, Plasti Dip on it uh, and just regular rattle can paint. Yes. A tummy window. Now, the, the only difference is, because this is out of the video game, it's not going to be 100% accurate, because she does not have baby bling. <laughs> and I will. I wish I could do that with my character in the game, but it doesn't let me. So I'll do it in real life. Uh, yeah, so anyways, this has got the plastic dip, and then just regular, you know, cheap-ass spray paint uh, on top of it and as you can see it I mean it does crease when you bend it but a shot of the heat gun it will um, go away but what I have done um, originally I just used uh, dry brushed silver paint but then I got this stuff uh, rub and buff which is basically a carnauba wax with metal powder in it. And you can get some really nice metallic finishes with that. Um, and if I were to paint it over with um, like a clear purple, I can have a nice deep uh, purple metallic look. <laughs> this... Yeah, it's it's light as hell, but yeah, it does look very heavy and thick, and um, even when you're wearing it, it looks strong and bulky, which is kind of the idea uh, for this armor. For this, it's going to be a little bit more streamlined and feminine for me. Um, oops. <laughs> oh, that actually reminds me. I made a, started making a thing for a guy who's supposed to be a drone, uh, but this gives you kind of an idea of some of the stuff you can pull off with this foam. Um, you know, I've got a nice 
compound curve up here, several compound curves here, and that's all the nastiness inside that's hidden. Um, this is the sealant to hide the seams where you don't want them to be. Um, but yeah, you can get some really fine, intricate stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, uh, the biggest one that I'm still trying to figure out is the lance. Um, it's probably going to be, because I'm 6'1", it's probably going to be about 7 or 8 feet long. <laughs> it does kind of look like a fender, doesn't it? Um, it's actually the, the top cowl for a now defunct um, drone. Uh, it was supposed to be like, almost like, um, not even, a, it's not like the the typical four rotor drone. It was going to have like two jet engines with a tail and then a, a machine gun underneath and all that. Um, I don't know. But it ended up, uh, the project not going through. So, um, yeah, and you're right. It, it does look bulky and realistic and, and whatnot. Uh, I'll show you the body armor as well. And again, these things have taken a, an absolute shit kicking over the last couple of years. But, uh, you know, that looks like it weighs a freaking ton. But it's 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 light. Um, and one thing that I will be doing with everything is I've got my laser etcher. And I can do that as well. Uh, I haven't quite figured out how to do. Uh, it's not really hot. Uh, it's getting a little warmer now that the sun is out because it was. Uh, yeah, I'm six one. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm an Amazon. Mickey's armor. Mickey Mouse. Is that who you mean? I hope not. I take that as an insult. Uh, Alpha Mart. The Lance. It's. Semi planned out. I'll be using uh, EVA foam and um, yeah, you like that, eh? Um, yeah, it's going to be EVA foam for most of the bulk, and then the shaft itself will be, I think, a one and a half inch uh, PVC pipe. Um, probably. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it, it'll be a PVC pipe, and I'll probably have it uh, somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I just kind of did a generic ODST, and uh, I liked the shade of red. It's actually um, it's actually a rust inhibiting primer, to be honest with you. The red. Uh, I just like the the shade of it. Uh, it looked really good with the, uh, the the black, so I went with it. Um, but yeah, you're now that you're mentioning because I haven't played ODST in a long time, um, years now, I think. Um, what was I saying? I have completely you distracted me. <laughs> this one, All right? Not that great. <laughs> um, you guys keep distracting me. I can't remember what I was going to say. Um, oh, yeah. The, the booby blades have to come off, unfortunately. They are the wrong shape and the wrong size. They need to be bigger. Uh, they need to start further back and actually come down and then back up to about here. Um, so I will be ripping those things off and redoing them. <sighs> I like the smile. 
Oh man, I'm hamming it up now. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, you know, like again, what I was saying, you saw the these other pieces. Oh shit. Um, but even the the ODST, um, you know, you can get all these nice um, shapes with the different techniques that I've shown already. This one here, I actually made an extra piece after I cut this hole out of the back, which is slightly larger, and. <laughs> 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 it's slightly larger <laughs> and then it's cut and folded and then glued back in uh, and sticks out a little bit coffee 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 um, and then I've got the base um, breastplate and then these extra shoulder flap things on top with all this detail and over here, we've got... This is like five layers of different foams and whatnot, shaped and ground and blended together, um, and then glued on to the front of this very, very plain um, base piece. Yeah, uh, and that's, that's all with uh, the rub and buff, and... There's a really neat technique that I did with these uh, the paint to make it look uh, uh, chipped and, and worn off, and that is hairspray. Uh, what you do is you paint your base color, and you, uh, in this case here, I masked off uh, the, uh, the, the rank stripes, Mask that all off, spray it with some hairspray, then paint the gray on, and then once that's dry, take the, the masking tape off, then get it wet with just plain old water, and then you can scrape it off um, with like a toothpick or whatever, and it'll come off in little chunks so that it looks like it's all scratched. Um, now this is again, pretty old, so, you know, like the ODST logo here, which is dusty as hell, um, it's actually got some natural wear in it, um, but that's what I did with all of these, so that all of that um, chipping paint where the gray is, is just flaking it off with hairspray. It's a really cool technique. Um, then dry brushing with uh, silver or uh, if you can get it, that. <laughs> yes. Hairspray and duct tape will save the world. Uh. Actually, it has been through hell. <laughs> um, I made that armor... I think about two two or three years ago and obviously uh, I was a little smaller and I just dropped my earbud sorry um, yeah so it's not going to fit me anymore but uh, I made it for I think I just made it because because I could and then uh, you know I, I had it on my old mannequin my old boy mannequin uh, which was sacrificed for this lovely lady here um, because I didn't feel like having two of these things. Yes, it does work with uh, plastic ones. I will show you. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but uh, on my falcon here, move that out of the way. Uh, oh, we gotta take that off too. Let's 
So in here, and now I don't know if you can see, on the chair, um, I've done the exact same thing. Um, same with these cargo boxes. I just painted them silver, sprayed them with hairspray, sprayed them black, and then um, got it wet. And with a toothpick, I scratched off the uh, the black on the high points and gave it a nice um, a nice worn look. Um, so it was painted, then hairsprayed, um, exactly the same as I did with the the armor. Uh, Steph, I'm in Hong Kong, not Japan, but uh, yeah, it's uh, actually twelve eighteen. Um, so, yeah, it's that's my Mona Lisa right over there. Um, and it will be for sale. So buy my stuff. Uh, anyways, uh, we are at the hour and a half mark. And I like to keep this at an hour and a half or less. So I will bid you all a good evening or a good afternoon or a good morning, wherever you happen to be in the world. Um, and I will be back on Monday. <laughs> uh, I'll be back on Monday, same cat time, same cat channel. And, uh, we will continue on with the, uh, the live stream. Um, so shameless self promotion. Uh, all of my social media is down below in the description box. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Uh, right there? There? I'm not sure where. Um, down at the bottom of the video. Uh, and if you like what I'm doing and uh, you want to help me out, uh, consider uh, becoming a patron on my Patreon, and that would be awesome. All right, so I will see you guys on Monday. Love ya. Bye. Now let's see if I can end the stream properly. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>